Hello, welcome. Look at this cool problem we've got here. Give it a shot, try it out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. All right. So isn't algebra amazing? I mean, we can solve this problem. Isn't that cool? All right. Well, uh, maybe you're not so taken aback by it, but I love it. I love that this is essentially a quadratic um, equation. And what I'm talking about is that if we just kind of move things around here, look what I'm doing here. Let me just write it out and show you. And you know what? I've got color here, so I want to color code. I love color coding. So I'm just going to color code the e to the x for a moment. And I'm going to put everything else in black. So I'm not changing anything yet, necessarily. It's all These are all equivalent values. Oh, and that, that looks sloppy. Let me fix that. That's not OK. All right. All right. So what you might notice is that this structure here is quadratic. And what I mean is, let's say I just replace e to the x with um, a variable. Let's, let's change it to, I don't know, m. So let's say I say e to the x equals m. I'm just going to set that as a definition so you can see what I'm talking about. If I rewrite it, what would I get? Well, I get m. I got two m's there. And here I put m squared minus, <coughs> excuse me, 13 times m plus 12 equals 0. This looks a lot like x squared minus 13x plus 12 equals 0, which is a quadratic function. So when I see this thing right here, I'm noticing I've got e to the x. That's just a variable, some, some value, some unknown. It could be an m, it could be an x, anything. And the structure is something squared minus 13 times that something plus 12. That's what a quadratic equation looks like, a quadratic function looks like. And here, we want to factor it. So I'm actually going to, I mean, a lot of people like to use substitution and stick with m and then substitute back. They always confuse me. So what I would say is just factor it out as it is. How do we factor this kind of thing? Well, all we need to do is factor those two binomials. And instead of, if you remember with factoring parabolas or quadratics, you're going to have your variable in front here. Then we need two numbers that add up to 12, excuse me, multiply to 12, but add to negative 13. And that's minus 12 and minus 1. Negative 1 times negative 12, that's plus 12. Negative 1 plus negative 12 is negative 13. So I factored this thing out. And again, all I'm doing, let me just scroll down, all I'm doing here is exactly what you might do in this situation here. If I said factor this thing, you'd say, oh, well, I put my x's in the front. I'm putting e to the x in the front now. And then I, I'm going to put a minus, uh, minus 12 and minus 1 here, because negative 1 times negative 12 is 12, and negative 1 plus negative 12 is uh, negative 13. I'm using that same strategy up here. But now, um, in order for this product to be 0, e to, the x could e, e to the x minus 1 could equal 0. So e to the x could equal 1. And e to the x could also equal 12. If e to the x is either 12 or 1, you would get a product of 0, right? 12 minus 12, that's 0, and times anything over here is 0. If e to the x is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and then multiply that to 0. But we want to solve for x. So if I take the natural log of both sides, I can finish this problem, right? Natural log of e to the x equals the natural log of 12. So the natural log of e to the x is just x, because e to the x power is e to the x. And one answer is it could be x could be the natural log of 1, which is just 0. e to the 0 power is 1. That's what this is saying. And the other answer, I could just say, well, x is equal to, because natural log of e to the x is just x, the natural log of 12. So these are our two answers that work. Isn't algebra amazing?